taking this moment to thank Elegance, our venue partner, the epitome of sophistication and state-of-the-art working spaces to fulfill all our space requirements. We are reaching out to you with another edition of In Conversation, brought to you by Daily Mirror. And today I have with me a very inspirational lady. She is a leading entrepreneur representing one of the most amazing hospitality brands in Sri Lanka. She's a socialite, a loving mother, and I'm very curious to get to know her more and to learn about her journey. She is the chairperson of Jetwing Hotels and the managing director of Jetwing Travels, Shiramal Kure. Thank you, Irushi. Thank you so much for joining in with me. And thank you for asking. And um, I often don't see you much in front of camera, so I was like, it's, it's. I was very <laughs> persistent about having you on this chair right now. So I'm really happy today. Um, Shiramal Kare, the name itself um, has shined throughout in many conversations, and it is a very inspiring person. Oh, good according to, know. to so many people. <laughs> so today, I want to know this amazing journey you've come across and. Let's start by talking about your childhood, where it began, where you schooled, okay. all of that. So I come from a very conventional, traditional family. I have a brother who is also in the business with me. So my dad, uh, my parents started this company and I studied at St. Bridget's. And while growing, I never wanted to join the company because uh, my dad told me to become a doctor, actually because he wanted to, uh, Fidel Castro was his idol. Oh, wow. So he was very enamored by the free medication that was given in, um, in Cuba. So he wanted me to become a doctor and he was going to do this dispensary. Like they had those dispensaries then, like a yes. clinic. And then I was supposed to give free medication. So I, all my life I grew up wanting to, to be a doctor. And when uh, the A-levels came and I started dissecting the, the rats and the frogs, I knew it wasn't for me. I just couldn't handle the formalin and the smell. So, so he said that was fine. At least I tried. And overnight, I had to change schools. And I went to Holy Family to do my A-levels. In, in the, the only thing available was accountancy. So I did commerce subjects. And then I became an accountant. So uh, I went to the UK also. And I studied there. And I worked there. And then I joined. I came back to Sri Lanka and joined an advertising company, which I loved. I loved. Uh, working there almost six years I worked and uh, subsequently yeah joined the family business the travel company which was very small when I joined actually and it was in Nigambo but then yeah so that's how I joined the company. Subsequently joined meaning you didn't want to step into the family business in the first step itself what made you get into advertising you wanted to take your own thing? Not yeah well I because I know I, I always thought okay the family business is for a son I Somehow I never, <laughs> it never struck me that I was expected to work or I had to work or, you know, I, because I, I always wanted to be independent. And, uh, and then when I came back, I looked for jobs. People used to, you know, figure out somehow that I was so-and-so's daughter. And they would say, you know, you should go and work for his father. You know, there's no point working here. So then I, fought, I was fortunate. One of my friends said there is this Indian company who's looking for an accountant and maybe you'd like to apply. And I did and thankfully I got that job, which was fabulous. And your learning curve, I can see that you were initially passionate about biology and then you get into accounting, then you get yeah. into advertising, then you step into hospitality and right. tourism, traveling. Having a dynamic approach when it comes to working, did that help you as a person? Yeah, so the biology part, I don't think is a passion I had. Maybe because my father like a... said, yeah, I, I just, you know, I began to want to do it. But uh, accounting also, I just got into it. Not, not because I wanted it. But I liked it. I liked accounting and I'm glad I did it because it's really helped me in, in, the, in the business world. Advertising, I loved. I loved the people. I loved that the whole vibrancy of an agency and, and the young people and... So it was the right time to be in that industry. It was a really fun time. And then actually I, I, I was a whistleblower. Yeah. So that's how I <laughs> lost the job. I lost my job. And then my dad said, you know, why don't you come and work here? So that's how actually I got into. Otherwise, I perhaps I would have still been in advertising. 
So yeah, so it, it did help me. Yeah, the fact that I didn't join the <coughs> family business immediately, I had worked somewhere else, really helped me because I can see a different perception to the whole thing. I look at it in a different perspective, actually. Definitely. And in your journey as an entrepreneur, as a socialite, doing socialite, your own thing. Socialite, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. <laughs> I mean, you, you make quite an entrance. Is you know? it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, I have to say that personally. Um, but uh, I would like to know throughout this process, at one point you become a single mom. Yeah. And you hold responsibilities of an amazing son, who I also personally know, who is doing an amazing job. So what was it like to really manage your work and, and manage your responsibilities as a mom? What was it like? So I was fortunate actually, my, my parents were there. My mom was an amazing help. And even my mother-in-law, ex-mother-in-law was, was very good. So both of them really helped me out and I also had help at home. So they were very nice, you know, they, they, whenever I needed them to take care of my son, they did. And uh, so, so that really helped and even his dad, was, was there for him, you know, whenever I needed, if I had to go abroad and I said, you know, could you take care of him? He did. So that helped and I tried to make sure that I was always at whatever event he did at school and whenever possible. I think almost every time I've been there with him. Um, so yeah, it, it was tough. It, you know, for a woman, when you're a mother and a working woman, there's a huge, enormous sense of guilt. Because when you leave the home, you feel guilty that you left your child home. When you're at work, you sorry, when you're at home work, you think, oh my God, my child is home. I don't know what he's doing or he or she's doing. When you're at home, you think, I should have, I should be at work. I, there's so much for me to do there. So it's, it's a huge sense of guilt that only a woman will go through that. So it's a case of balancing, compromising and you know, getting used to it. Yes, so. and also we can see that uh, Gehan mm. uh, is is someone who's very much into entertainment. His passion is right. to have an artistic approach in life, and and that is something that is kind of a, a kind of a detour when it comes to what the family has been up to. Right. Uh, as a mom, what do you believe in terms of letting your children explore their true passions and to set them free? What is your concept? Because in Sri Lanka, we can see. As you mentioned, you did accounting because that was right. the only thing that was available. Yeah. So uh, instead of always focusing on what's available, creating right. something sure. to set someone free. As a mom, how yeah. do you believe it? Yeah, so I think it was even my dad, He though he kind of tried to guide me, eventually he let me do what I wanted to do. Um, so that gave me a huge sense of freedom and independence. And so the decisions were mine ultimately. So, which is why I think I felt he should also find his own space rather than confining him and saying, uh, you know, you have to come back and work in the business. And so I never gave him even an inclination that I was expecting him to come and work. Uh, so I don't think he ever expected that. And also, of course, right along, I knew his interests were elsewhere. So I just let him do that. And uh, I, I always believe in it. And if he wants to come back, he can always come back and work. Uh, in the business there are, there are different aspects of the business that he can do um, and maybe even set up a separate area that would interest him but uh, other than that yeah I mean I, I always encourage people to do what they like to do because they are best doing what they like to do definitely uh, and we also hope that uh, Gehan could bring something <laughs> new perhaps through entertainment because yeah. Sri Lanka has massive potential sure. and uh, local artists like Gehan I mean, himself you, has you massive potential. You yourself are an amazing artist. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I really <laughs> yeah, appreciate it. Yeah. And uh, talking about the brand Jet Wing, um, this is something that is very much known. And, and when it comes to your work in the hospitality sector, I would like to specifically position this question in terms of the COVID situation. Right what kind of challenges that y'all have been in and just maybe give a like, kind of overview of the context. Yeah. yeah. So actually from the day virtually I started in the business, it was always challenges. Yeah. Either the LTT or the, the, the bombs were going, the JVP, uh, then we had the Easter bomb and now of course the, the COVID. But during, I must say from 2009, we did have a clear run as well until the Easter bomb. So right now this is a huge challenge because it's not just us. All this time it was us. So the sub, it was the demand side was kind of manageable. Now there is no there is supply, then there is no demand. So and then the whole world is 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 uh, having to go through this. So it's a huge challenge. 
and uh, so many people are uh, without income. Uh, but we can't. Now, Sri Lanka also doesn't have a support system like a welfare system where they are given payment if, if they lose their job. So we can't let people go home because what are they going to do after working for a company for 20, 30 years? You can't just tell them we can't pay you. So, so we have retained them and uh, we have, of course, we have reduced our pay pays for almost everybody and uh, carrying on. But so for the travel, for the hotel company, fortunately, there are locals. So Sri Lanka, we've always taken care of the Sri Lankan market, the domestic market. So as a result, we have a fairly good following and they are coming, they are patronizing, thankfully. They've been always with us in the good times and bad. So they are coming and the expats who are here are also visiting us. Then one of our hotels is a quarantine hotel, another one is an intermediate care hotel, uh, other one is uh, some of them are level one hotels where we can now get tourists. So we are hopeful that things will improve uh, in, in the next couple of months and I think the government also needs the dollars coming in because we also need money. So I think we it, it should be all right hopefully going forward but it will be in little baby steps, it's not going to be a steep increase. It'll be slowly coming up, but last nine to ten months was a real challenge. Yes, yes. and also Shiramal, uh, your company has uh, been a part of the backbone that's supporting the government when it comes to you know fighting the pandemic and then also, you know, harnessing the quarantine process. How does it? What is the experience like to really overlook the whole financial situation and be in the position of someone who's providing social welfare? Yeah, so I think. Um, Giving back to community was something that uh, my dad, uh, our dad, was always like that. You know, he always said, "If you're living in a in a in, Mara, in a community, you have to take care of them. Otherwise, you can't prosper." So whether it be Nikambo, that's where he started his his, his hotel, first hotel, and it was a very little sleepy uh, fishing village, and there was nothing around. But he made sure that whatever benefit the hotel had was also passed around. So so that's that same thing is there in us. It's kind of in our DNA. Um, so when this situation arose, uh, Iran did inform the authorities that we are willing to keep our hotel. And at that time, uh, we were not expecting any, any uh, money uh, because it was just to be given. But subsequently, it was paid quarantine. So it, it also helped us, not just the government. It helped the company also for the cash flow. Um, yeah, so it, it's a, it's an amazing experience. I came to a quarantine hotel, to our own hotel, as a quarantine, not a patient or a guest. And I was shocked to see, you know, the staff in their PPE costume, uniforms, and, and the, the place looks dead. I mean, there's no life. Everybody's in their room. So it is pretty depressing. And, and I felt so bad that this hotel, this, this is the state of the hotel now. But uh, I guess that's the way it is. Sometimes we have to hold, I mean, sometimes we have to pause on the good things so something great can yeah, come exactly. forward in terms of well-being, in terms sure. of seeing more tourists. Absolutely. And uh, with your work uh, with Jetwing Travels, what's in store for the future given that we are picking up? Yes. So what's in store? Yeah, so um, we also have an office in the Maldives and Maldives have picked up. So most of our people are now doing the Maldives and, and it's, it's slowly picking up. So we are hopeful now, I think there's a bubble with India. So India and Sri Lanka, if that happens, that's going to be good for, for Sri Lanka and also Sri Lankans can go to India. Um, so I think we are hopeful that with the vaccine coming, there would be a gradual increase, as I said, little baby steps and people also, you know, have been cooped up. So they are also raring to go and uh, it should happen. We are very confident it will pick up. But uh, maybe not this year, perhaps during the winter months when it's even right now. It's a pity because it's so cold in Europe. Everybody wants to come, mm -hmm. but unfortunately they can't come. So uh, I, I think it's, it's, we've gone through the worst and we are, we are hopeful that the vaccine will at least last six to one year once you take it. So people can then travel and it becomes like a normal flu uh, vaccine after that. No. Definitely. I think yeah. it's high time that this gets normalized yes. in the right Absolutely. way. Absolutely. And also, Shirmala, just to touch up on your global experience when okay. it comes to your work. Yeah. Just uh, just let's have a chat about what it, what it was like to travel around the world for work and what you have been up to. And also, 
when you travel abroad, then you see Sri Lanka in a different light. You right. see from the perspective of a foreigner and outsider and you see the potential. Right? Yeah. So let's have a chat about that. So I love Sri Lanka. Yeah. I, mean, I think it's one of the amazing <laughs> countries in the world. I just love it. Uh, and I like the people. They are, in, they are very intrusive. They are very, you know, backstabbing all of that. But with <laughs> all of it, I still love it. I, I, I mean, I love it. I, I love it. Uh, still living here, going to school, working, all of that. But um, yeah, but as you said, traveling, going abroad, studying abroad, working there, you do see a different uh, side to life and, and how professional people are. And um, so all that, I was quite amazed uh, when, I, when I worked overseas and came back here. I think we are more laid back and, you know, we, we don't take, extra times, deadlines, really didn't matter. But now I must say it's getting much better. People are becoming very professional and, uh, you know, being being very methodical and they, they run meetings very, very well. I also happen to be a director in uh, two other companies, which are non-Jetwing, actually four. Uh, and it, it's it's very nice to see uh, different aspects. So, so that is something I, I enjoy because I'm learning things from different industries. So one is the commercial bank. So banking is a, is, is a, it's something I never knew anything about. So I'm very thankful that I can learn that. Then the other one is an insurance company, Allianz, which is a multinational company. So, so I'm glad that uh, I'm learning those aspects as well. And uh, the other one is um, Capital Alliance, which is an investment bank. And there's also another company called Ceylon Tea Brokers, which is a commodity broker. So the, the, the fact that I can learn other, other businesses and see how they operate is, is, is some, it's an opportunity I really cherish. So, so that together with uh, having worked overseas, I think I can see things in a slightly different perspective than if I was just at home and only working in, in our family business because somehow family businesses are slightly different because you know it's 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 more uh, pet, uh, like um, it's a family business you know you you take care of your people in a different way the the team looks at you in a different way they expect certain things differently um, there's a little more empathy uh, whereas when you're a corporate you can't do that because you have to also do certain things in a, in a particular way. So, um, so, it's, so it's, it's, it's been good for me to see how the, these two worlds uh, are side by side. And contrary to what people think that family businesses are not run professionally, it, that's, that's a myth. I mean, I know so many family businesses which are run fabulously uh, well and professionally with, with very capable um, you know, intelligent, educated staff. So, um, so it's different uh, businesses, different people, different talents. Uh, yeah, it's 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 been a good journey, I must say, so far. I think just listening to it itself, I can tell that it's probably a tremendous experience you've had yeah. being a part of it. And also, just very roughly asking you, being a female role. Yeah. You know, in this corporate environment, did you face any sort of challenges or did you actually get to witness something uniquely and bring something different to the table? Yeah, so uh, when I started out, I guess the fact that uh, it's a family business and my dad and my brother were there, um, that helped me in the company. And even outside, because my dad was known, people kind of maybe treated me with kid gloves. But having said that, there are times when, you know, the, the usual harassment happens and people will call you a killer or, you know, my dear and darling. I wanted to slap them. I'm sure you have it all happening all the time, right? I mean, you wouldn't sure. call, tell that to a boy. So yeah. it's, it's that kind of thing that really, they don't realize it. Maybe a man thinks he's doing a good thing by calling you that, but they don't realize you know that, that you do feel demeaned you know I, I, I hated it and uh, so, so those things are there and I know they're still there and uh, but other than that um, I haven't felt any uh, situation but there have also been situations where you're sitting at a table and you're the only woman and then you say something but nobody hears it you know so you've got to be a little more aggressive and keep saying and maybe maybe somebody kind of listens to it and then funnily, some other person says the same thing. 
and then it becomes it's more wow, penetrating. Yeah, 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 of course, yeah, that's that's a good idea. And then you think, excuse me, I said it all this time, but that, but all these things <laughs> change over time, and then you know through experience, you know what to say when, and people also then expect you to say things. So yeah, it, it's it's a. It's it's not easy being a woman, and uh, you know, funnily, uh, my my mom, when I was expecting my my child, she kept praying for a son, and I said, why? I to me, it didn't matter whether I had a son or a daughter, and she said, no, it's not easy being a woman, and I couldn't understand, you know, at that age, I was having a good time, and I thought, What's why this not? Nonsense? Yeah. <laughs> so, but now as an older woman, I do realize that, you know, what she meant, because it's so much easier being a man. It's it's. Uh, uh, so now, like an inherent privilege. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's. I think the whole system was made for a man. It's like what they call a man's world. But I think now, fortunately, the tables are turning. Kind tables of. are turning. Yeah. Fortunately, uh, yeah. So it's it's it's. I'm glad that I'm living in this moment because there's a lot of women thing. You know, now even even like we are discussing this. When it was my my mom's time, I don't think they even discussed it. Yeah. There was no question. Uh, and I was telling somebody, I grew up in an environment where they said girls should be seen and not heard. You sit pretty, you dress nicely, and you just sit. You know, you're not even supposed to give your viewpoint. So that's how it was in my lifetime. And to see it change uh, has been a tremendous uh, experience. So. I fear for people like you because you have it really tough. I think we now, yes, <laughs> you know, because as it goes on, people would expect you to be like you know, like the other. Like yeah. we are still given there are quotas. Now people are talking about quotas for women on boards. So then companies are kind of pushed to have a woman. Yeah, you know, and it's a nice thing now to yeah. say I have so it's many a trend. people. Yeah, I have so many people on the on my board as women, and my CEO is a woman. My uh, my uh, manager is a woman, and I have so many female women in the company. It's refreshing. Percentages, yeah. So I'm sure that's gonna taper off after a couple of years, and, and hopefully it'll be normal. And it's like, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how it should be. I think that's how it should be. I mean, you're we are both normal people, male men and women are equal. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> I think we spoke a lot about um, work. And to kind of wrap up the conversation, I would like to know, apart from being an amazing mom, a very successful entrepreneur and a traveler, what do you do during your leisure time, if you have any? Yeah, I do. I mean, I, I love traveling, as you said, even for leisure, I like to travel. I also like to write. Um, so that's something I want wow, to do. Yeah, I, I want to write uh, <laughs> uh, books. So so I, I, I read as well. Um, Who's yeah. your favorite author? Do you have a uh, no no particular author? Do you have I a like genre of reading, like fiction? Uh, yeah, no, or autobi I like okay. autobiographies, and uh, yeah. So yeah, and, but traveling is my is my main thing. As I'm getting older, now I'm getting a little more spiritual as well. So I spend time uh, being spiritual, and and that gives me a lot of strength. Uh, yeah, so that's... Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I hope you live, um, you know, with happiness and thank success you. with that mantra and hope to see you write and travel more <laughs> right. and thank inspire you. us also throughout. So thank you so much, Roma, for thank joining you with us. Thank you, Irushi, and I wish you the same in your career. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you.